So let's talk about how we can audit activity that happens on our SQL server. Now, there's going to be a couple of different pieces to this. We're going to start by creating an audit. And audits can be written to an event log or they can be written to a file. So I want to create a file so that it doesn't fill up our event log and make things you know, sometimes harder to find or anybody who has access to the event log could view the data. So we're going to put this on C drive. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it audits. And that's where I'm going to store my SQL audits. So in my uh, SSMS, I'm going to expand security and audits. And here, I don't have any existing audits. Now, when you define an audit, basically you're not defining what you're going to track. You're defining where you're going to track it. So you can create multiple audits and write data from different applications or from uh, different audit specifications, which is where we define what we're tracking, to different audits. Now I'm going to simplify my life here. I'm just going to do one. So I'm going to create a new audit, and I'm going to call this AW. See, this is for AXA uh, or Adventure Works. Let's call it AW Tracking. That sounds like fun. AW Tracking. Now we have a delay. How long can we delay before we have a problem? Uh, on audit log failure. So if I cannot audit something, what do I do with it? I can continue, which means I may have unaudited activity. I can fail the operation, which means if I can't audit it, you can't do it. Or I can just shut down the entire server. And that's a very dramatic approach. So you're probably going to use one of these two, and it's going to depend on how security conscious you are. Do you want to make sure you track every single thing that ever happens that you're trying to audit? Then you do a fail operation. If you're okay with missing a few things here and then potentially be getting most of it, then you'd continue. All right, where are we going to audit to? This is our audit destination. And you can see I can do this to a file, to the system log, or the security log, or the application log. Anybody has access to the application log. Security logs can have a bunch of other stuff in it, um, both of which might make it a little problematic. So I'm going to audit to a file, and I'm going to set my file path. I'm going to go to C drive, audits, which I just created, and that's where it's going to go. Okay. And then we're going to do some limiting. What's the maximum number of rollover files? So rollover file, the log file fills up, what goes to the next one. Um, what's the maximum? And then I can set a maximum number of files, or I can set it to unlimited. Um, and then this will flip back and forth. Uh, maximum rollover files or maximum total files. So I want to go ahead and let that go unlimited. But the downside of it is if I do this, I might run into a problem where I use up all of my space on my hard drive. So I might want to set some limitations. Another thing here real quick is I can also set how large a single file can get. So how big is my single uh, log file going to be? And I can specify that here. I can also choose to reserve disk space. So even if I leave those two unlimited, I can say, hey, give reserve X amount of disk space. Make sure you don't need it more than that. So I'm going to go ahead and leave those because we're not going to be auditing very much or very long. But this is where you define your audit. And then you can also choose to filter that as well. So that creates my audit. My audit, however, remember this defines where I store data. It's not activated at the moment. So I have to right click and enable the audit. Uh, file path was not provided. Oops. Let's come back down here. I played around with that and we lost it. Let's put this back in place. Okay. Um, that is giving me two things. Let me open this one up. Oh, shoot. I didn't enable the audit. I clicked on new audit. Let me delete that one and then enable that one. There we go. That looks better. Okay. So now I can start auditing to that location. Now there's two different types of audits I can do. I can do a server audit or I can do a, let me expand my VentureWorks database here, uh, security, I can do a database audit. 
So let's look, I'm going to do a database audit, but I want to show you this real quick. New server audit specification. And remember, this says what we're going to track. So I'll select the audit that I wanted to go to. I can give it a name. And then here I can pick all of my uh, actions. What actions do I want to audit? And so I pick my action. I would pick my object class, the schema of the object, if I'm doing it on specific objects. Uh, principle, do I want to track it for a specific user or everybody? So that allows us to track what happens on the server, not necessarily what happens on the database. So in this case, I want to do something that I wanted you to see where that was at, though. So that's going to be more for higher level tracking what your sysadmins do. So if I want to access or track what happens with specific data, then I'm going to do a database audit specification. So I'm going to right click new database audit specification. And this is going to be, I want to track, I'm going to give it a name that makes sense. I want to track select on the customer table. Because I want to see who's you in my customer data. And then I'm going to tie this to a specific audit. And then this is going to be my audit action type. What do I want to do? And again, I've got a whole bunch of things here, including right here, I can do a select. I can also track updates, inserts, deletes. So I'm going to do a select because that's going to be easy for me to demo here in a minute. I want to do this on a specific object. I could do a database, a schema, or an object. I can do over here. Let me choose my object name and I want to browse and I want to do this on sales LT dot customer. There you go. And OK, and that populates my schema and my object name. And then the principal name is who do I'm doing this on? Who am I uh, auditing? And I can choose a specific user or a specific role or I can do public and track everybody. So I'm going to do that, hit OK, and then you see here we can add more things to it as we go as well. So we can have tracking on multiple different things within the same audit specification, which then tied back, and we can have multiple audit specifications, which then tie back to audits, and we can have multiple audits. The reason you would do that, by the way, is if you want to store them on different physical locations because you're doing a lot of auditing. All right, so I'm going to hit OK, and just like our AW tracking audit, that is not active by default. So I'm going to edit my data or enable my database audit specification. Now, this should track anytime I run a select query on the customer table. So I'm going to click New Query, and I am going to use AdventureWorks 2022. I'm going to select asterisk from customer. Whoops. Sales LT dot customer. And I'm going to execute my query. Okay, that pulled my data. So that should have triggered this audit specification, which would have saved something into this uh, audit. And so I right click and go to. Hold on, let me get on the right one. Uh, view audit logs. There we go. I just missed it. Now, this is something I've been hap seeing happen. It uh, doesn't seem to work. And I've ran across a couple of things that say you there are some workarounds that might fix it. Um, but if you run into that problem, you can also do this. You can query this directly. So I'm going to issue the command select asterisk from... And then I'm going to do sys.fn dot get, whoops, not dot underscore get. And here is our get audit file. Now I need to specify my file path. So that's going to be C colon backslash audits backslash. And then I want my give me everything dot SQL audit. So that's going to say, give me all the audit logs. Just show them to me in one query. And then closing that to close off my uh, single quote there to 
keep that in text. Default, comma, default. And then close the parentheses. Okay, so at this point, if I execute this query, it tells me that I have a missing comma. There we go. Now let's try this. Okay, here are a couple of entries. So it gives me my event time, my sequence number, what action. SL, by the way, is a select action. You don't have to memorize that. Uh, is column uh, permission, session ID, scroll over. We've got a bunch of IDs here. But this is where we're getting to what we're really looking for. Who did it? So the session uh, server principal name, the server principal name, that tells me who executed this. The database object, this was done on the DBO, the database owner, uh, the database name, sales LT customer, the schema name, the object name, and this was the statement, select asterisk from sales LT dot customer. So this will now allow me to track anytime somebody runs a select on that table. Just for the fun of it, I'm going to hit it three more times. Come back here, refresh or re execute this query, and there are all of my additional select statements. Come all the way over here, and you'll see that I went too far. There we go. There are all of my commands. So now I have auditing enabled, and now I can track what people do against my database. And remember, these audits can happen against individual databases, schemas, tables, or against the instance itself and the use of elevated permissions and instance level configurations.